I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, wanted to share an article with you that I read on the Wall Street Journal, and that reminds me that you know, I've, I, in passing, I've rec uh, 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 talked about the Wall Street Journal many times. You know, I get a lot of the catalyst from my video blogs from the Wall Street Journal, and a lot of people will ask, you know, Owen, what kind of news sources do you take in? I know you don't watch the TV news and read local newspapers, which I don't. I gave up on those ten years ago. But one source that I do subscribe to is the Wall Street Journal. I've had a digital subscription to the Wall Street Journal now for many years and you guys might want to check it out. As a matter of fact, as a new subscriber and being Canadian, it's an absolute bargain for the first year. I think last time I checked for around $85 or $90 Canadian, you can get a full unrestricted uh, digital subscription to Wall Street Journal and it's incredible the amount of information that's in there. Um, they've got you know everything from you know of course business news. Um, you know they've got a fantastic real estate section in there. Uh, they talk about Vancouver real estate quite often in the Wall Street Journal real estate section. Feature homes and condos up here. Um, they have interviews with CEOs, uh, entrepreneurship, finance articles, video, uh, lifestyle, entertainment, cars, you name it. Give it a go. I mean, I um, after a year, unfortunately, that deal doesn't go anymore. You have to then go switch over to a monthly uh, subscription rate. I think I'm paying about $15 a month, but I'm happy to pay for it. That and Spotify. I think are the two best bargains going. I've had a subscription to Spotify for about four years and uh, I think it's a bargain with all the access to the podcast and everything else. But in the Wall Street Journal here they had a story and this is something that I've touched on many many times over the last four or five years on my blog here. Uh, because a lot of people think Vancouver is an anomaly in some way. We've got these high real estate uh, prices here, of course, and incomes have not kept pace. How does the average guy buy a home? Well, listen, Vancouver is not an anomaly. Vancouver is like probably 50 or 60 other cities in the world, and probably like about 15 in North America alone, where real estate has skyrocketed over the last two decades, and incomes uh, you know, have not kept pace. So it was a story about housing in the Tampa, uh, I think it was the Tampa, St. Petersburg area, Central Florida. And it said that, you know, back in 1999, an average house you could purchase for about $105,000. Today, that average house is $490,000. And it said that back in 99, the average salary in that area was 62K. Today, it's 68. So incomes have barely gone up, yet the price of those homes in that Tampa area have gone up fivefold in, in the last 22 years. Now, sound familiar? I mean, the same thing has happened in Vancouver. Actually, it hasn't gone up 500%, that's for sure. Vancouver homes probably in the last 22 years are maybe up 200%, depending on the home. Maybe a bit more for detached, a little less for condos. But you know, this is what's been going on in cities all over the world. These highly desirable cities like Vancouver that have been discovered. They're amongst some of the best places to live for lifestyle, amenities, entertainment, restaurants, weather, all that good stuff. You know, in Vancouver here, as I've said many times, you're not just competing with the local people that were born here. And I know a lot of people that were born and raised in Vancouver feel that it's unfair. They feel that they're entitled to be able to buy a detached home on the west side or on the east side or live in a three bedroom condo in Yaletown. And that barn left the state, that horse left the stable a long time ago, 20 years ago. Um, now all is not lost. What you have to do is get into a career uh, and survey the landscape on where the jobs are that are going to pay you to be able to buy a house. And they're out there, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But Vancouver is like a lot of other cities here. You know, in Vancouver here, you're competing with a lot of buyers from all over Canada. Uh, Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario. I probably sell eight to ten homes a year from people that have just come in to BC and to the lower mainland in Vancouver. Some of them are coming here for jobs, usually in the tech sector, but a lot of them are retired. They were professionals in Toronto, they sold their detached home in North York, and have come out here to buy a three bedroom condo in Coal Harbor or the West End, or maybe buy a townhouse in Yaletown and they're gonna come out here and live the West Coast lifestyle. Who wouldn't? Fantastic weather, mild summers, lots of sun, mild winters, quick hop 
to California, uh, a five hour flight to Hawaii. This is where they want to live. So you're competing with them. You're also, of course, competing with buyers from China, from India, from Iran, from all over the world. Now, these are not foreign buyers. Let's get that straight. Uh, these people have their permanent residency status or their full Canadian passport. So this is the way a lot of cities are. Southern California, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, New York City. Boston, Washington DC, Toronto, London. You know, these are popular cities. It's not just based off the locals here. Now, if you want something that's more attuned and prices are attuned to the local market, then you're gonna be going to cities like Edmonton or Winnipeg or Regina. Nothing wrong with those cities. And, and there, I often say here too, just put a disclaimer out there, there is no shame in leaving Vancouver. For many people, it's probably a very good move the careers and the jobs they're in, you've done the mirror test, It's you want to stay in those careers, uh, there is simply not going to be enough to afford the housing here. In that situation, maybe it is in your best interest to move to one of these more affordable cities like an Edmonton or a Regina. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want to live and thrive in a city like Vancouver with its high real estate prices and high prices overall for everything from gas to groceries to food, restaurants, then it's not going to be for the average. You're going to have to get into a career or, or a, a multiple jobs or start your own business that can earn that type of income that you're going to need, which is going to be easily six figures now. No problem. And well above that if you want to be in Vancouver. I just saw an article yesterday that Disney is opening an, uh, a, a studio up here next year. I think it's going to be something like 100 or 150 high paid tech jobs. So these, you know, are, I've talked about it, are where the, the money is at right now. Amazon, of course, has a very large present here in Van, presence here in Vancouver, and that's only going to get larger. Uh, Microsoft, SAP, video game companies, these are all high paying tech sector jobs, and there's more of them coming. And I can tell you, I have clients at all these big tech companies, all of them. And all of them have told me that, you know, with a lot of these companies, they have offices all over the world. Seattle, Southern California, Chicago, Toronto, Europe. I can tell you that once they're at these companies for several years, they can then start to put in transfer uh, uh, requests, put their, their names on waiting lists for openings in other cities. And all of them tell me that Vancouver is at or near the top with pretty much all these big tech companies. And why wouldn't it be? Have a look at this jewel called Vancouver. I mean, this is one of the most desirable cities in the world to live, bar none. And I've been traveled all over the world, and I would agree. The lifestyle we have here, the seawall, the world-class restaurants, the incredible dry, warm summers, the mild winters, Whistler an hour and a half away, the Okanagan, quick drive to Seattle to see a Seahawks game, quick flight to Hawaii or Los Angeles in the winter to go on vacation. We've got it all here. Low crime rate, clean air, easy, uh, fresh drinking water. This is where people want to live. Now, it's not for everyone. You've got to be earning that six figures because the, the real estate to live here, to buy here and own here is going to be expensive. But as I've said, these tech sector jobs provide that. This is where they want to come. That isn't going to stop, folks. It's only going to get uh, more profound as we move forward. And all you have to do is look at what the current developments have been approved for here, walking around downtown Vancouver. As a matter of fact, go walk down Alberni Street right now. If you walk down Alberni Street from Thurlow all the way down to um, Denman, you're gonna see probably eight or nine development permits going up there for uh, uh, luxury high-rise condos. All these buildings, many of them are gonna be absolutely spectacular. We're talking architecture firms like I.M. Stern from New York. You got that Kenzo one that's going up. These are all gonna be luxury condos starting at probably around 2,000 a square foot. That's gonna be a low floor in the alley to well over $4,000 a square foot. That's what's going on here in downtown Vancouver. You can still buy a good condo now for $1,150, $1,200 a square foot. Probably look like a pretty good buy uh, you know, 15 or 20 years from now. But that's what you're up against here. 
You're competing for buyers from all over the world here. Final thing I'll just leave you with. I normally don't read these things off, but I just want to finish it with because as you guys know, I've been debating back and forth in the comment section here. People talking about the times have changed. You know, the prices need to, a major correction here. You know, how does someone afford to live in Vancouver? It's impossible. Well, it is, again, if you're living off an average person's wage. I know it doesn't seem fair. That's, a, you know, not here or there here. We're not going to debate that. What I'm telling you, though, is all hope is not lost. Careers that worked 20 years ago and you could buy a detached house do not work. Many of them don't work anymore. So what you have to do if you're a young person is you have to survey the landscape what is working, what isn't working, and then pivot to those type of careers. And you know, they don't, most of them, or a lot of them right now are in tech. They don't all have to be in tech, of course. You know, I've got, uh, I've often said here too, that, you know, becoming a, a, an elite or a top level salesperson, whether that's selling cars or real estate or computer components or snowmobiles or whatever, you know, if you can become an elite salesperson, you can easily get into the six figures and up and be able to comfortably afford a house here. Blue, don't count out highly skilled tradespeople, uh, plumbers, electricians, crane operators, people that own, I've got sold several detached homes to guys that own their own landscaping businesses. These can be lucrative careers, but something leveraging tech Pa creating passive income flows can help get you there as well. But this was a response that I had given to a guy on my YouTube channel a week or so ago. I'll just read through it here because it's talking about areas where you can go, how to survey the landscape on how I replied to him. I normally don't like to read this stuff out. I'll kind of just paraphrase it here for you guys a little bit here. But essentially I said, you know, the opportunities to be able to make a six-figure income today are far more plentiful than they were 20 years ago. Technology is the game changer. It allows people to leverage their time and start creating passive income flows that you, I never would have dreamed about 20 years ago. Investing your money into zero uh, commission brokerage accounts, uh, low commission uh, trading is also a game changer. You know, back when I started out, you know, you were probably having a drag of about 20 to 30 percent from the outrageous and complete rip-off fees that I used to pay to be able to buy and sell stock and invest my money in these you know, high-cost uh, mutual funds with MERs running at three, uh, you know, 300 basis points. Um, you don't have to do way more uh, anymore to live in Vancouver. You need to get into a career, a side hustle, or, a bi or start your own business and invest your money and get it working for you passively. Um, you know, you're gonna need, you're gonna need to earn 100K in income uh, to be able to buy in a city like Vancouver or maybe 50 other cities. You know, the prices have gone up, but so have the opportunities that technology has provided. Um, if you don't believe me, then who do you think is buying these 650 and $700,000 one bedrooms downtown? Um, you know, the media would try and tell you that it's foreign buyers and money launders, which is a myth. Um, you know, those that had, the buyers in many cases are young people that have had the foresight to move into these high paying areas. You know, I have many clients that are making $150,000 a year and they're in their late 20s or early 30s. Um, I know because I'm selling these homes in these condos downtown every month to these people. You know, these young adults are making it happen. Once you're in the real estate market or once you've got your money working for you in the equity market, good things start to happen. I've done many blogs on that. Dividend increases, stock splits, just the prices slowly rising over time. You know, I'm still buying real estate for my portfolio. Uh, it's far easier for me now because of the seeds that I planted 30 years ago. I've got lots of equity built up in the properties I bought 10, 15, 20, 30 years back. I've got good relationships with my mortgage lenders. I've got a passive income machine via the quarterly dividends that my stock portfolio produces. Also, the monthly rent checks that I collect from my tenants every month. Sure, instead of paying $375,000 for that condo 10 years ago, I'm paying six seventy five dollars now. But the interest rates are far lower and my income from the six or seven areas that I draw from uh, is far greater than it was 10 or 12 years ago for me. It's all about planting the seeds and letting compounding and time do the thing, do the magic. It gets easier as you go along. 
It's like rolling a stone down a hill. The momentum picks up and it becomes far easier. It's getting that rock moving though. You know, I, I probably think that personally I'm wired a bit differently than most people, as are most of my clients. Successful people in general uh, tend to think as I do. Uh, we don't look backwards. We don't look to some good old days mentality that things were so much better and easier in the past. We're forward thinking. We look for opportunities and keep a positive, optimistic mindset. Um, you know, we're, in my opinion, we're living in the golden age of success right now. I just read an article in the Saturday's Wall Street Journal talking about the thousands of instant, millen instant millennial millionaires that have been created during this COVID lockdown by buying com uh, companies like Tesla and, and Nvidia, Bitcoin. Now, I don't, I'm not recommending these to people, that's for sure, but there is, in the Wall Street Journal, apparently there's been thousands of newly minted multimillionaires in their early 20s because of these stocks. You know, many young people are thriving in this in current environment, uh, buying lots of houses, uh, and of course, though some are some are struggling. It's up to you which camp you want to be in. Um, you know, you always want to be moving forward, complaining and hoping for the market to get back to normal or some good old days, or for the market to crash. You know, is not the type of thinking you want. Um, you know, you need to take the mirror test. You need to make the changes and adjustments in this current environment. That's how life works. What was a good career and could buy a home 20 years ago could be obsolete today. The successful ones recognize this. They make the proper decisions and adjustments. The ones that don't are going to continue to struggle. That's just the cold truth. And it is. Wall Street Journal has been littered with all kinds of articles on what I've kind of talked about here how the game has changed. You've got to be getting in. There's so many opportunities now, and I'm under the belief the bar is set incredibly low now. It was a lot harder. I know people laugh at this, but there was way more competition 20, 25 years ago, uh, as far as I'm concerned. These days, a lot of people have just given up. Uh, if you've got the willpower, the motivation, the positive mindset and want to learn, you can rise above here, no problem. Just finally, I'll just, one last article, I'm talking about Wall Street Journal, because I was, you know, talking about education here and student loans and things like that, just quickly. Go on to the Wall Street Journal. They've been running a series on education, university in the United States, and maybe how you have to be there. Again, they're very careful of what you're getting into there as far as what you're taking in, in university. Talks about how there is a major glut of lawyers now. And a lot of these people that are going to law school, especially the second and third tier universities. As far as the Ivy League schools, like a Harvard Law, that's a different story. But the bulk of it is the second and third tier universities. How these people are racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans. And out of school, the job opportunities are not good. Most of them are average uh, a student at a law school in the US is making forty or $50,000 a year and has two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt, student debt. You got to be careful. They also talked a story on the Columbia, uh, a program. Uh, it was film production, media production at Columbia University, which is an incredibly prestigious university in New York City. How they're racking up, you know, several hundred thousand dollars in debt, and when they graduate, there's no job prospects for them. Some of them are waiting tables at a restaurant now. So the landscape has changed so much now. You know, uh, going to a good school and getting a, a you know a, a, a law degree or a business degree doesn't always guarantee guarantee you success anymore. Again, survey the landscape before you commit to those things. This Wall Street Journal had talked about you know highly skilled uh, blue collar jobs, plumbers, electricians that are in incredibly high demand, and these guys are earning well into six figures. So. No shame in, 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 there's some big money to be made in other areas, not just corporate America. I'm Owen Biglane. I've gone on a little longer than I wanted to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.